I make change on an individual level, on an organizational level. So I feel like my, <laughs> when I didn't do a top 10, um, I have like four, but they're kind of long. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to interrupt me while I'm talking too, and uh, or we can do questions after. Um, just as a question, how many of you have started or would like to start your own food businesses of some kind? For profit, non profit, cooperative, what have you? Um, so, I, I guess I want to say first, before I start using this word every, you know, every four words, what I take sustainable to mean. Um, to me, very broad strokes, I believe that it is a, uh, a business or, or an idea that has positive impacts on the economy, the health of communities, and the environment. That's, I try and keep it really simple. <laughs> um, and I don't think that um, it's fair for me to talk about how to be a sustainable and just part of the food system with the business um, without telling you how to be a sustainable business yourself. Um, and that means a business that can survive, an, an idea that actually lasts, something that is viable, um, that can make lasting change. Um, so it's, I'm sort of more, more that, that, that micro level as opposed to the macro level. Um, and I would like to tell you a bit about sort of things that you need to think about before you think about, before you actually start your business. Um, and then I think that will help make you be sustainable as well. Um, so basically, if you have a food idea and you'd like to contribute to the, to the bigger food system, the first thing you need to do is develop a business plan. It's so simple and, and, and people sort of throw it around a lot, but it's actually a long-term process that you need to engage in. And it's an exciting process, um, but it needs to happen before you do anything. Um, a lot of people that I work with, food entrepreneurs, food producers, people that are um, working in urban agriculture, they have a great idea, they try and ex execute without taking those first steps. Um, and, and the idea fails, it doesn't, it doesn't reach its fruition because they haven't taken that time. Um, so you have to ask yourself all, kind of, all kinds of questions. You know, who do I want to do it with? Are other people doing this already? Is there a chance to work collaboratively? There are a lot of people doing really cool food projects in the city. Um, that that I've seen people dovetail with, as opposed to starting off from scratch, they've actually caught on to another project that's already started and laid some of the groundwork, and they have a value add to give to that, and, and it sort of saves you some of the groundwork, and it also builds the, the strength of the, the initiative that's already existing. Um, you have to think about how much your idea is going to cost to execute, um, and how long it's going to take you, and where you're going to get the finance. As somebody who started my own small food business, it's a law practice, so it's a bit different, but not really in the sense that I wanted to work in food um, because I love food and I'm passionate about it. And I had skills that I thought could be led to the food system somehow. Um, but what I didn't think about, what I didn't take the time to think about was how I was actually gonna support myself <laughs> while starting a fledgling business. <laughs> I sort of had it in my head that you just start a business and then people come to you and pay you. Um, <laughs> and that does come, but it comes slowly, and it sometimes takes a long time. So you have to figure out where your where your income is going to come from. Where is this investment money going to come from? Um, because if you don't if you don't take care of that, then the great idea that you have will never see the light of day, or it'll only last for a few months. Um, so again, it's it's about finding the financial resources, but it's also making sure you're up to the task. Starting a small business, particularly in the food sector, is um, is financially um, a burden. It, it has financial implications, but it's also psychologically, emotionally, physically quite draining. Um, so just be ready for it. It's totally worth it, but you have to be ready for that before you embark on it. Um, something that a lot of people come to me with is questions about um, the laws that govern the particular areas of food that they want to do um, business in, or that they have an idea in. So be it urban agriculture, or be it they're a small food producer, Maybe they want to start a community cafe or a cooperative. Um, you need to know the laws that govern each of those areas. For instance, small food producers, there's like a myriad of things that you need to know in order to be able to sell your food at a, at a farmer's market or at a retail store. And it has to do with labeling and ingredients and packaging and where you can make your food and who can make your food and how long it can stay on the shelves and all kinds of stuff like that. So really take the time to familiarize yourself with those things because you can get caught later having not done one of those things, and uh, it can it can make all the difference in the world. So familiarize yourself with that stuff. Um, there's also a project that I'm working on with the Food Constellation at CSI that Sustain Ontario is also a part of, and pushing forward. It's
It's about uh, demystifying food regulations is the, is the name of the project. And it's basically going to be a hub where we provide resources that are free um, to kind of decode uh, some of the very complicated bylaws and regulations that govern food and that, and that uh, I think, impede people from executing really good ideas on a grassroots level in food. So look for that, because that's, I think, well, we hope it'll be helpful. And it'll save you from having to do all of the legwork yourself. It'll sort of all be in one spot. Um, the, the next thing you have to do is determine the best structure for your business. So you have to think about, am I going to be a nonprofit? Am I going to be a for-profit? Am I going to be a cooperative? Um, I think cooperatives are a really underutilized structure um, that more people should entertain the idea of, especially um, with respect to food. I know there's a lot of people that know about the West End Food Co-op and Karma Co-op. And these organizations often tend to have more um, staying power in some ways than, than a regular for-profit or non-profit. Um, so anyway, I, I'm a big fan of cooperatives and I wish people, I wish I could see people start more of them. So think about that. Um, and then think about, you know, basically what you want to see out of your business. Is it strictly for a social mission? Um, or is it uh, sort of for a social mission, but also so you can make a lot of money, which is also fine, right? Um, so think about those things before you start. And then you need to make sure, I say this to people all the time, is that um, when you're embarking on a project, be it, you know, even if you're not sort of going the route of incorporation, like even if you're not sort of finalizing all of the corporate structure aspects of it, if you're starting to work with people on a project, um, write things down. <laughs> <laughs> I know this sounds so silly, but I see people so often that are in the throes of conflict with people that had nothing but the best of intentions because they didn't clearly lay out um, what their expectations were of the project at the beginning, what their ideas were, um, what their obligations to each other were. Um, Contract, like contract law seems really boring, but in my opinion, contracts are actually communication tools. The lawyer is laughing back there. <laughs> it is really boring until you actually apply it in the, re in the real world, and then it becomes your communication tool. And to me, a, a really good contract is actually a conflict resolver. Um, it's something that says that you're both singing from the same song sheet. Um, and it's not just sort of typical like employment agreements or um, you know, other kinds of sort of straight up contracts. It's also like codes of conduct, terms of use, like things that just get down on paper what you what you all think and what you all agree on. It'll save you, it'll, it may be the difference between uh, the success of an idea and, and, and the failure of it. So that's really key to, to keep in mind. Um, the next thing I wanted to say that I think is a really important um, thing to contemplate when you're launching a food business or starting embarking on a food entrepreneurial idea is make friends in high places. Um, basically what I mean is um, get to know your local business improvement association, get to know your city councilor, show up to the meetings, get, like make your opinion heard. Um, be a face that people know because there is so much that you can, there's so much um, to be achieved uh, sometimes by just picking up the phone when you've developed a relationship. I do it all the time in my work. When somebody's struggling to get a bylaw uh, amendment made or a, you know, to get their small business approved, their permit or their license or what have you, if you know the counselor that is in that ward, if you know the Business Improvement Association and you're friendly with them, that's the key, <laughs> so you need to be friendly, um, that will set you ahead miles and miles and miles and miles. I, it's happened to me with, on, on behalf of other people 15, 20 times a month. So that's really important. Um, I also think it's really important, particularly in the food sector, to set aside business development time to build your network. So come to meetings like this. Go to things like the Food Constellation meeting at the Center for Social Innovation. Like I said before, there are so many things happening on the grassroots food level in Toronto, um, especially in terms of entrepreneurial uh, activities, that what I see a lot is people uh, reinventing the wheel so there'll be a project, you know, on the east end of town that's exactly the same as the project on the west side of town. And, you know, I just really wish the two sides could come together and and work together potentially collaboratively or at least share ideas or resource pools or something like that. The other thing is that, um, especially particularly in this right in the city when you're starting a business, um, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for collaboration and resource pooling in terms of things like sharing kitchens, um, bulk deals for packaging. <laughs> bulk deals for marketing materials, things like that, like um, 
kitchen, commercial kitchen space is a hot commodity in the city, um, and I've seen a lot of people overcome that hurdle. If, if they're food producers that need one of those things, I've seen a lot of people overcome that hurdle by working with other people in the same position so that they can all pull their resources and, and attack it together. Um, so that's really a key, a key thing. So don't isolate yourself when you're starting a food business because it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you. <laughs> um, and don't forget to play, I think I've, I kind of mentioned this already, but don't forget to play an advocacy role. The way that I look at my business is sort of half working in a tangible, practical way with food entrepreneurs and producers and those seeking to build more sustainable food systems. The other half is playing an advocacy role, like I said, just showing up at the meetings, becoming a familiar face to people, making sure that if there's a big decision being made, somebody thinks, oh, she was here at that meeting and she had a question about that, we should loop her in. You know, it happens all the time, and then you actually get a seat at the table. Um, and anybody can do it, it's completely achievable uh, on any level if you put in the time. So um, make sure that you're also sort of advocating for, not just for your own individual entrepreneurial idea, but also for um, a, a more flexible uh, environment for others to do the same. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all I really have to say. I think all of these things will help you build. If you, if you think about these things prior to launching a food business, I think you'll be in a much better position than if you don't. And you can't contribute to a more sustainable food system if you can't sustain your own small business. So um, that's, that's it for me. <laughs>